Team South Africa have launched the official program at the opening ceremony of Expo 2020 Dubai. Let's go live then now, which is where we find my colleague Ayanda Nyati, who I do envy at this point as he gets to really catch a glimpse of what Team South Africa has to offer. Ayanda, Team South Africa has pulled out all the stops. Without a doubt, Bongiwe, good evening to you, and I'm glad to be able to bring some kind of reprieve to the political heaviness, at least insofar as the news cycle is concerned, where you're at in South Africa. But you're absolutely right, an important day for Team South Africa today here in Dubai, especially because it's the official announcement of our participation on this global event in some respects. So we're here, of course, as you know, for the next six months, and South Africa is placed at, a, at what is known as the Opportunities District. That's essentially where different countries are hoping to congregate, for lack of a better term, and create opportunities for the people that they represent back at home. The first uh, couple of weeks, couple of days for South Africa are really centered around the arts and the culture, and that's essentially what has been showcased where we're at today. Several uh, high-end officials speaking as we open up this official opening, if you get what I mean. The ambassador, uh, South African ambassador to the UAE, that is, Mr. Saad Kacharya, welcoming delegates, and then the official keynote coming from Mr. Vusumuz Mkiza. He's the director general of the Sports, Arts, and Culture Department there in South Africa. And Bungiwe, there's no overstating why this is an important moment especially for artists. We know that back at home, the COVID-19 pandemic dealing a heavy blow, especially to these people who contribute a lot to, in some respects, ironically, keeping everyone sane in what feels sometimes like a very <laughs> insane world. And so uh, that kind of messaging has really come through loud and clear today. Uh, our ability, our hopes that their participation here at the Dubai Expo will, you know, allow artists to get that help that they need to get back on their feet as we deal with what the world looks like post COVID-19. And Ayanna, one of the things that is really going to be important, especially when you look at the partnerships that could then emerge out of there, is that countries at this stage are finding themselves trying to really align with one another in order to strengthen their battered economies coming out of COVID-19. Absolutely. There are many people, Bungia, who are worried about the state of multilateralism in our world. And that is on the back of, if you like, some political leaders that have emerged in the past couple of months who seem to be driving a wedge of a divide in the world. And it happens in a context where it almost feels like we're connected now more than ever. So what an expo like this is hoping to do is ameliorate those points of departure, bring everybody together, ensure that any kind of multilateral platforms has uh, its worth shining on the global stage. And so you're absolutely correct. The thinking is behind creating some kind of collaboration as we chart a way forward post during COVID-19, whichever dispensation you believe we're at, considering the different messaging that's currently out there. A lot of world leaders said to uh, converge, influential individuals as well, who are hoping that the message by and large, despite what every country is hoping to walk away with individually, is that we can continue working together on a global stage. Organizers of this event, in fact, Bongi, are hoping that it'll be one of the biggest events during COVID-19. They're expecting over 20 million visitors between now and March next year and of course we've brought to you some of those visuals of some of the visitors who've come through in their large numbers at the very beginning of course there's no telling how or if that will be sustained all the way till March next year but a big takeaway for South Africa is this hope that us being here the money the investment whatever it is will result in the kind of opportunities that our country needs to bounce back from the economic fallout of COVID-19 especially in a context where Cerro Ramaphosa has further eased the economy and opened up our international borders. Now, uh, Ayanda, one of the things uh, when, you know, one looks at that brochure that has been put together uh, by uh, Team South Africa in order to showcase just a little bit of what we have, you really just see that there's the cream of the crop here. I mean, you're looking at from designers to those, uh, you know, making sculptures to musicians. And, you know, it's, it's quite a diverse brochure that has been put together. But talk to us about who we've seen, who we've spoken to mm -hmm. in terms of the artists themselves and what are they hoping to achieve out of this? Because I'm sure they're also looking for their own partnerships. 
Without a doubt, the big A-listers include Tandis Omazai. In fact, she's just gotten off stage and walked past us as we were preparing to speak to you just a short while ago. As expected, absolutely mind-blowing performance from her. Multi-award winning artist, several albums out, and all of them doing really well. Uh, but Master KG is also in the mix. Uh, the Jerusalem hit maker, he says there's a whole lot more to come. He's really appreciating what's currently happening in the world. And by that, I mean this kind of opening up that's taking place once again. He was explaining to us that this is just one of several stops that he has as he continues promoting his work throughout the world. He's been to Paris and I think to several other places after his participation here at the Expo. Mafigi Zolo is here as well. We had the pleasure of sharing a flight with them. But outside of that, there are also really interesting fine artists who are here at uh, uh, Bongiwe. I got an opportunity to to speak to uh, a guy by the name of Charles. He uses sand, essentially, to put together his uh, sculptures. Uh, it's really interesting stuff. There's another one who uses candle and, like, essentially burns onto the canvas to get you that image. We had an opportunity to speak to them. I have no doubt that we'll be able to uh, bring you some of those visuals as soon as they're ready. But you really get a sense that there's a full spectrum of creativity and skill that South Africa has decided to bring out here today. And that really is, if you like, the overarching thrust of what South Africa is hoping the world will take away from our participation at an event like this. Outside of that, outside of the, the grand South African take home, you're right, individual artists are hoping that ultimately this will get them the audience of the world in the form of new customers and hopefully take their careers in the direction that they're hoping it heads. I tell you what, Ayanda, you are in a position a lot of us here in studio are quite envying uh, because we've been trying to unpack political manifestos, the, you know, the entire day. But don't let Ayanda and I bore you with some of the details. Let's take a look at what is happening inside the venue. Good evening and welcome to tonight. Tonight, we will share with you our stories, our music, and our dance. Now, it would be ungrateful of me and all the men and women of our country here tonight to share with you without paying our respect to Meshalot Mahomu Manya Makaeke, the mother of freedom. I stand here before you because of the selfless contribution she made to the struggle of our people. The seventh leader, she fought for the rights of the people, women's rights, welfare rights, economic rights, voting rights, human rights. From quail to the grave, she was indeed an extraordinary woman. Hers was an ordinary life, lived among ordinary people. This is what made her extraordinary. Wherever she went, she was among her people, and she made sure there were schools. In her hometown, in the then northern Transvaal, together with her husband, she built a school. And when she went to the Val, they built another school together. When she went to live in the East Rand, there too, they built a school. No African child was left nor kept behind. 